Hello and welcome to the Consistory of the Coelk YouTube channel. I'm your host for this video, Reverend Jake Zabel, the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church, located in Dolby, Queensland, Australia. This is our video mini-series, Ask the Consistory, where we answer listener questions. Today we will be doing part three of our 11-part series on the topic of closed communion. If you would like to see the Coelk positions on the closed communion, go to our website www.coelk.org, go to the We Believe tab and click on our theological opinion there on closed communion. In this theological opinion, we have two different sections. One is those who are to be admitted to Holy Communion and the other is those who are not to be admitted to Holy Communion. Each of those contains a list of 10 types of people that are either welcomed to communion or not welcomed to communion. In this series, I'm going through those two lists, comparing those who are welcome and those who are not welcome. As I mentioned in my previous video, because these sections are addressing similar topics, there will be a lot of overlap and repeating. Just bear with me. Let us get underway. Those who are admitted to Holy Communion. Jesus instituted the sacrament of Holy Communion for his body, the Church, for the forgiveness of their sins and for their unity with him and with each other. Therefore, those who should be admitted to the sacrament of Holy Communion are those who, too, believe the real presence of Christ's body and blood in the sacrament. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave it to them, saying, This is my body. In the same way, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, This is my blood. Jesus told us that this bread is his true body and that this cup is his true blood. In John chapter 6 verses 51 to 58, Jesus tells us that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood, for his flesh is true food and his blood is true drink. This text shows us that we are truly able to eat and drink the body and blood of Christ which is truly given to us for food and for drink. In 1 Corinthians 10.16, Paul says that the cup we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ and the bread that is broken is a communion with the body of Christ. This text shows us that the bread and wine which have been blessed or consecrated is truly the body and blood of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11.27-29, Paul says that whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup in an unworthy manner is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of Christ. Therefore, a person should examine himself and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body and blood eats and drinks judgment on himself. This text shows us that present in the bread and wine is both true physical bread and wine, and at the same time the real presence of Christ's body and blood. Holy Communion is meant for those who believe the words of Christ, this is my body, this is my blood. For those who discern the real presence of the body and blood of Christ in the bread and the wine, receive it to their blessing and for the forgiveness of their sins. As for those who are not to be admitted to Holy Communion, Jesus commands us, do not give dogs what is holy and do not throw your pearls before pigs. Therefore, the sacrament of Holy Communion should be withheld from those who, too, deny the real presence of Christ's body and blood in the sacrament. On the night when Christ was betrayed, he took bread and gave it to them, saying, This is my body. And in the same way, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, This is my blood. Jesus told us that this bread is his true body and that this cup is his true blood. In John chapter 6 verses 51 to 58, Jesus tells us that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood, for his flesh is true food and his blood is true drink. This text shows us that we are truly able to eat and drink the body and blood of Christ, which is truly given to us for food and for drink. In 1 Corinthians 10 16, it says that the cup we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ and the bread that is broken is a communion with the body of Christ. This text shows us that the bread and wine which has been consecrated or blessed is truly the body and blood of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11, 27-29, Paul says that whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup in an unworthy manner is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of Christ. Therefore a person should examine himself and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body and blood eats and drinks judgment on himself. This text shows us that present in the bread and wine is both true physical bread and wine and at the same time the real presence of Christ's body and blood. 
this text also makes it clear that he who does not discern the real presence of Christ's body and blood in the bread and wine eats and drinks judgment upon himself. For he who does not discern the body and blood of Christ eats and drinks in an unworthy manner and is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of Christ. Hebrews 10.29 tells us that those who profane the blood of the covenant by which they were sanctified will suffer a horrible punishment. This blood of the covenant is the blood of Christ. Holy Communion is meant for those who believe the words, This is my body, this is my blood. Those who do not believe in the real presence of Christ's body and blood in the bread and the wine are guilty of sinning against the Lord's body and blood and will suffer a horrible punishment. For those who do not discern the body and blood of Christ in the bread and in the wine are guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord, and they eat and drink Holy Communion to their judgment. Therefore, in order that they do not eat and drink judgment upon themselves, the sacrament of Holy Communion should not be given to those who do not believe in the real presence. This wraps up part uh, three of our 11-part series on closed communion. Join us again next time for part four.